are here to talk about Shark Bait, aka Jet Ski. And this one is directed by James Nunn and stars Holly Earl. Now, shark movies. I've reviewed a lot of them. I love shark movies for the most part. And, um, you know, we get a lot of them, admittedly. And I've got to be honest with you, there's a lot of criticism about shark films because it's like, oh, they're so unoriginal, you know. Same thing happened in every one and things like that. But before I get into this review, let me just kind of address this because... Yes, that is true, but, you know, what circumstances can you have a kind of shark attack film that aren't relatively similar to other shark attack films? You know, there's, it just you just can't do that much with it outside, you know, in terms of kind of originality. You might have the occasional kind of spark here and there, but one of the criticisms I see so often with shark films is, oh, it's just so unoriginal, it's just so typical. They are, that is true for the most part. But what could you possibly do unless you make it completely whack, you know, bonkers and kind of just like stupid? And I don't really like those kind of film, shark films anyway. That being said, let's talk about shark bait. So James Nunn, um, relatively kind of established director, mainly directing kind of um, kind of B movie action films. Done a few of the kind of the Marine series uh, sequels um, that started with I think um, John Cena, I believe. And uh, he's also done a couple of uh, Scott Adkins kind of action movies like The Eliminators and things like that. But this movie is kind of in the, the shallows, the 47 metres down kind of mould of shark film. It focuses on five friends as they have their spring break and off to kind of like a para paradise style resort. But they decide on their kind of last night they want to have go out of the bank, have a bit of a party and end up stealing two jet skis. Uh, they go out into the sea, as you kind of do with these jet skis, and crash into each other, wrecking one jet ski completely so it sinks, uh, and kind of pretty much de disabling the other one. Not only that, one of the kind of members is, is quite injured and is bleeding profusely, which of course attracts a large white shark. Now what will happen? You have to watch the movie and find out. So, let's discuss. Now, so, We'll come on to the negatives, but let me talk about the positives, because I actually kind of enjoyed this movie. And as I've mentioned at the beginning, I watch a lot of shark films, and a lot of them are mediocre at best. But there are a few that's, that, that kind of stand out for me, and although this isn't certainly one of the best ever shark films, it is certainly above average. Um, for a number of reasons, I think, number one, we have to factor in the budget of this one. But I thought, for the most part, with a couple of exceptions, the shark effects here were done really well, especially when you see the shark underwater. There's a couple of kind of sequences where we see, you know, the shark more or less kind of straight under under the people where they're kind of in the water and things like this. And when, when we, the shots that have the shark underwater, I think are excellent. Um, you know, sometimes really, really good. And we get quite a lot of kind of people in the water with the kind of dealing with the kind of the shark and stuff like that. And, you know, that's all pretty good. Uh, here's the other thing as well. One of the critiques that I do see a lot in shark film is how we it, kind of the camera kind of pulls away and all we see is fins and kind of splashing in the water. Uh, uh, not with this one. This one is one of the most gory shark films I I've, I've remember seeing uh, because it does not shy away from the gory kills. I mean, yes, there are budgetary restraints in regards to kind of some of the gory effects here. You know, so obviously we can only judge it in the kind of the remit of what a, a film of this kind of level could possibly do. But it's easy could, as it could have been to probably, you know, have the camera kind of pan away or just have splashing in the water with bloody, you know, red liquid and stuff like that. We don't get it here. We see a lot of people getting chewed up, ripped in half. It does not shy away from the gore, which is obviously good. And people here bleed profusely as well. So there's no little trickles of blood. Uh, it, it, they bleed a lot, which is obviously you know, more realistic. Uh, so that was, uh, I, you know, a welcome kind of change into the shark films. And to be honest with you, I struggled to think of a more gory shark film off the top of my head, uh, because this one really does, I think that's its kind of unique selling point, if you will. It's a gory shark film. Yes, it's CGI kind of effects for the most part, a lot of the time, but again, I think hats off for the, for the effects in, which is clearly not a massive budget, to do a reasonable job, at least, on some of the effects. Next up, I didn't think the acting was bad. 
The characters we'll talk about, but I didn't think the acting was bad. I thought everyone here did a good job, and um, as far as I know, it's actually most of a European, uh, um, you know, cast. But I do think they did, they did a good job here of coming across as, you know, Americans and things like that. Um, but I've got to say, I thought that the acting was was all fine. You know, it was, obviously this is no this is no kind of like drama about the kind of the woes of the working class or anything like that. It's not going to be remembered for its acting. But the acting here was certainly, uh, I think, perfectly fine. I think it does not. It's, it's, there's no kind of bad acting that distracts you by kind of like clunky kind of line delivery or anything like that. The acting here was fine. Again, characters we'll talk about in a minute. Next up, I've got to say, on the technical level, this was very, very well shot. Um, you know, James Nunn, as I've mentioned, I think he does low-budget films, but they're not super low-budget. He does still have a films with a reasonable kind of uh, budget behind them, and as such, the production value here looks reasonable. Again, I'm not talking high-budget, necessarily, but at least reasonable budget to have some, you know, a decent kind of production value here. So we get kind of... You know, a real sense that these guys are far out in the kind of the sea. It looks kind of like that they are. It's filmed very well to give that kind of sense of isolation and everything kind of fight like that. Some of the kind of the uh, the, the set pieces that we have, I've got to say, are impressively kind of filmed. And obviously, it's, I like the kind of the, the contrast, the beautiful scenery with this deadly kind of creature uh, underneath the bloody waves. I thought it was great. So on a technical level, uh, again, with a couple of touches from the special effects that we'll come on to, I gotta say, I thought was all was all good. And this story, yes, it's unoriginal. Let's just say it, but it's still an entertaining one. I was entertained with this movie. As watching many films as I do on this for this channel, a lot of the time I think, oh, pause, I'll have a break. I can't, you know, it's a struggle to get through. This one, I was all in, paying attention, not looking at my phone. It had my attention. And even though, yes, it's not original, it kept me engaged. There's, and there was genuinely a few moments when I was like, oh, ee, and kind of even jumping a little bit, which is, again, quite rare for someone who watches a lot of, not only films, but shark films as well. So that was all quite good. What doesn't work? Okay. Um, so I've mentioned I like the effects, but there are a couple of times when the effects do look uh, not so good. And that's genuinely when this shark kind of rises out of the water. It's weird because we have these underwater shots with them, and they do use, you know, stock footage here and there as well. But a lot of the time, it's kind of a mix of stock footage and kind of CGI, which the CGI looks good. But when that shark kind of takes his head out of the water, it kind of looks a little cheap. In fact, it looks more than a little cheap. It kind of looks even a little bit crappy in sometimes. But thankfully, that's only a very often, every so often. It's not all that much. And again, I'm a little bit forgiving with kind of effects, especially on a, on a lower budget film. And generally speaking, I thought the effects were actually uh, very good. Biggest issue I think I have with this film. Now, we talk about the, the, the unoriginality of the plot. And again, I think you have to give some leeway with a, with a shark movie because there's, you know, there's only so many things you could possibly do. And this one does feel very derivative of The Shallows and 47 Minutes Down. There's a few people getting stranded out in the ocean with a shark circling them. You know, but I can forgive that too, because like I've said. But I think what this movie does in its negative, where I think it, where it, it could have avoided it, was having such cliche characters. Um, you know, we get the, 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 the typical somewhat kind of obnoxious kind of spring breakers. You know, we've got the, 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 the brunette good girl, who's clearly going to be our kind of central protagonist. You get this slutty, um, kind of like blonde girl with big boobs who of course is having, uh, you know, are doing naughty things with a certain other character and things like this, but you shouldn't be. Uh, you know, inflated kind of drama, which I didn't think needed it, just to kind of have this kind of extra element to it, which unfortunately is an element you see in a lot of kind of lower budget films that get to kind of drag out the kind of the running time here. It doesn't do it, it doesn't drag out too much running time with this one, to be honest with you. But it would have been nice to sometimes, you know, have uh, films where you don't have to have this kind of added drama. And I always think it's kind of like, you know, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to have a group of friends that actually kind of act like all friends, not kind of like tearing each other's heads off half the time? Again, a minor point here for me. Why do, is it in most films you get like an uneven amount of, of, of kind of like um, of people? It's like 
two guys, no, sorry, three guys and two girls. I mean, who kind of goes on a break like that? Isn't, surely it's, you know, surely you go as an equal number if they kind of coupling up and stuff. Minor point, I can maybe look past that one, <laughs> just to say. Um, I think there, there's, there's I think without spoiling anything, the end of the movie it goes a little bit too far into kind of the typical kind of uh, territory. Um, there was actually a point where I thought if the movie ended here, it might not be as climatic as maybe some people would like, but I, I would have liked the kind of the more re kind of um, realism to it. To be honest with you, um, because it, I think I think it would have been a little less typical because we have maybe characters or, or a character survive that maybe you wouldn't have thought would survive. Um, but no, it doesn't. It kind of goes into the kind of you know the, the typical kind of ending. To be honest with you, and the very final. Um, kind of confrontation again is a little silly and this shark I mean I think it would have been better to have maybe two sharks because this shark when it feeds on someone you know it seems to kind of like eat them so quickly it's right back on the others straight away I and mean, surely you know a shark who is eating like something the size of a human would take a little while to kind of fully eat that before it's kind of you know going to its kind of next thing but this one seems to be like Pac-Man you know, it's kind of just eating things way quickly and straight on to the kind of the uh, um, the next kind of victim, so to speak. And it was kind of, it would have been, again, it's just a little bit silly at times, maybe, kind of with this kind of undercut some of the kind of what would have been the realistic kind of aspects of it. Um, so it's certainly not kind of like a particularly intelligent kind of shark film, certainly not a well well-written shark film in regards to some of its kind of character choices. Uh, they're just kind of a bunch of kind of cliches, to be honest with you. And that's where I think the movie could have, could have done better. I don't begrudge it, the kind of the story, because like I've said, there's only so many things you can really do with this kind of shark film these days. But the character work, I think, could, could have been a little better. But overall, I've got to be honest with you, this one had me entertained. I was you know, glued to the screen on this one. And I appreciated the gory side of things because that's been a criticism of a lot of shark films. And I wonder if James Nunn and his creative team have actually taken that on board and decided to make a film that does actually feature a heavy amount of gore. So actually, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I actually say this is a, a, a good shark film, you know. And I've seen now one other review that didn't, didn't think it was a good, but I did. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Have you seen it or have I made you want to see it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.